Okay, so here we go um, with kind of events around fertilisation. I want to say at fertilisation, just because there's an awful lot goes on first. So um, when the sperm are actually made, and then they sort of hang around in the epididymis for a bit before being ejaculated, um, they're not capable of fertilising an egg cell at that point. So, and this relates really to the structure of the sperm cell. So we've got, obviously most of it is in just a nucleus with, you know, its chromosomes in, 23 of them, of course, not paired, haploid number. Um, we've got the mitochondria in the middle piece that are going to whip this propeller-like flagellum round and round and round to propel it. But the change that really has to occur is in this sort of, there's a, it's almost like the sperm's wearing a little hat. And that hat is called the acrosome. And it is full of digestive enzymes. So this acrosome here contains hydrolytic enzymes. Much better than saying digestive because the reactions that they're going to do are hydrolysis reactions, as you remember from core component. Now the thing is that in order to sort of, I, I think just about everybody knows from high school, oh the sperm's got to digest its way through to the egg, without any detail about what it's got to digest its way through. And what it's got to digest its way through is that zone of pellucida. And in order to do that and release the contents of the acrosome, it's got to um, it's got to link on to the zona pellucida, so you've got a sort of a little collection of um, of proteins sticking out of the top, and the acrosome reaction is about altering those proteins so that they are complementary to the receptors on the zona pellucida to let the sperm cell kind of latch on, if you like and release its enzymes to digest its way through. Now that can only happen in the female reproductive tract. So at ejaculation, when they hit the re female reproductive tract, obviously they're surrounded by their lovely seminal fluid uh, released by the prostate and the seminal vesicles. So prostate with all that alkali in to reduce the acidity of the vagina. And then we've got the uh, sperm pack lunch from the seminal vesicles, a bit of fructose, some sugars just to help those mitochondria along. So when it reaches the egg cell, the egg cell's got the corona radiata around it. Well that's not too much of a problem, all cells have little gaps between them and these are sort of a little, quite a loose cloud of cells. So they can wriggle their way through there but then they're going to hit this sort of thick layer of jelly, the zona pellucida. Uh, and the sort of bit that they need to get to is, is here. They need to get to the membrane of the secondary oocyte itself, which of course is suspended in metaphase 2. So the sperm cell, the acrosome is going to kind of rupture and release its enzymes, which are going to digest a sort of a a little pathway through all the way through to that membrane. So that's fairly similar to how plants, uh, male gametes, they have to sort of digest their way all the way down through the style and into the ovary in order to do the fertilization. That's exactly what the sperm cells do. So this little sort of pathway appears and the nucleus of the uh, cell obligingly sort of follows that through. So that's the acrosome reaction. That just refers to the digestion of the zona pellucida. If you look it up online, there's quite a lot of detail there. You'll see needle-like filaments penetrating through. Uh, don't need to worry too much about that. I think the key thing is the digestive enzymes, the, these hydrolytic enzymes, digesting a pathway through for the nucleus to go down. <coughs> when the nucleus actually gets there, it's going to, the membrane of the sperm cell is going to fuse with the membrane 
of the, uh, ooze, the secondary oocyte, which is still suspended in metaphase G. It's going to leave its middle piece and its flagellum outside. The acrosome's disappeared, it's released its enzymes, it's digested its path through. And the nucleus then, the, so the membrane fuses with the uh, oocyte membrane, secondary oocyte membrane, and the nucleus can then get in. Now, what is really important then is that something happens to stop any more nuclei entering. Because what we're trying to do in fertilisation is restore the diploid number to make a zygote. And so what we have is uh, what's called the cortical reaction. So just underneath the oocyte membrane, there are a lot of little cortical granules. And the entrance of the male nucleus into the secondary oocyte uh, stimulates calcium ions to flood into the cell. Calcium ions are involved with fusion, so they fuse all these cortical granules together all the way around the outside, just underneath the cell membrane, and make what's called a fertilisation membrane. <coughs> I'll spell it the British way. So, fertilisation membrane. And it's to prevent entry of other sperm. So we say that it prevents poly, meaning many, spermy, preventing many sperm getting in. It just sticks to the one. Obviously then there are events that have got to happen after that because fertilisation is a fusion of uh, two nuclei, but we can't fuse those two nuclei together. Uh, because one of them sitting there in metaphase 2. So you get the fertilisation membrane forming and then we've got completion of metaphase 2. Obviously we're then going to get another polar body, so the second polar body is going to be discarded. So again, we're dividing that cytoplasm very, very unevenly. So the second polar body is formed. And what we end up with is we end up with our secondary oocyte. With its two polar bodies and its fertilisation membrane. And we now have a female nucleus, and we've got a male nucleus. And we call these two pronuclei. So the pronuclei form in the cytoplasm, and there you can, if you put in pronuclei or early embryonic development or fertilization, You'll see pictures of these, the egg cell's really quite big and the, the pronuclei stick out like a sore thumb really. Um, so the pronuclei form and then they fuse and that's really the formation of the zygote. So once you've restored that diploid number, so they're forming a diploid zygote. <laughs> So fertilisation, a whole lot more complicated than sperm meets egg transpires. So you need to know all of those stages uh, and you particularly need to be able to compare what's happening in a human with what's happening in a plant. Good luck.